Hello there, good afternoon everybody. I thought I'd show you a bit of a wintry scene to start with to, to cool you down a little bit. So we've got snowmen. Um, sure, we've got Wendy, Christine, Geraldine, hello, and uh, Physics Knitter, hello to you. Uh, Mary Jane, Julie, Wendy, all on YouTube. Patricia Haley, hello to you. And Angie Jane, sorry if I miss anybody. Sarah was just emailing me. Um, oh no, we're, we're, we're fine over here, Sarah, thank you. But thank you for thinking of us. Um, hello Heather, Maria, not too hot. There is there may be a little bit of noise from the aircon. I do have the aircon on. It gets unbearable, let me know and I'll switch it off. But my hair gets straighter and my face gets shinier. So that, that's that. Uh, Tina Linda, hello to you. Who's got on Facebook? We have, who's first in? Alana Petit, hello. Um, and Kirsty, <laughs> I reminded to stop working on a Wednesday. It's when she finishes work. Um, hello Jackie, Helen, uh, Donna, uh, Julie Jones in France. I'll have a look at your postage. So I think I might have to refund you something, Julie. I'll have a look at that later on. Been a bit busy again today. Always a bit busy. Always a bit busy. Um, so Sheila, hello, and Sue. Hi, Claire, and Susan, and Brenda. Uh, Brenda's in Kentucky, and Sheila is in Alabama. Um, how's everyone doing today in the warm weather? We're we're all right, actually, Alan. <coughs> I was saying the other day, we've, I complain like mad most of the year because we've got a north facing house and it's freezing. So the sun never hits the house. But on days like this, it's quite nice, actually, isn't it? Bob's not too good, not enjoying it. Uh, Roseanne's watching live for the second time, broken up the school holiday. Welcome along for the second time, Rosie. Um, hi, Violet, hot in New Jersey. Hello, Julie in Vancouver. Thank you very much, Caroline. Hi, uh, Caroline, sorry. Um, Janice is in Watertown, TN. Is that Tennessee? Hi, Lisa. Hi, Debbie and Pamela. Lisa, I've got my grandchildren next week. I may be a little late next Wednesday. Um, received my Christmas book, ordered and then kit. Lovely stuff in there. Hi, Shirley Hurley. And Mary. Oh, that's all right. I'm a bit early, actually. It's only just four o'clock now, isn't it? Just thought, as I'm sat here, may as well press the button. Oh, Anne's got a known parcel. Hi Tracy. Um, right, now I've got some new, <coughs> new fabrics to show you. Do excuse me. And then if it, <laughs> gosh, I just noticed, if it doesn't blow away, we're going to do some hexagon English paper piecing and some 60 degree diamond English paper piecing. And then we're going to do some elastic. I can't remember your name, sorry, who wanted to fit elastic into the fitted bed sheets and wasn't getting the tension quite right. I've had a look at my fitted bed sheet and tried to figure out how they made it, so we'll have a go. All right then, Lisa, no problem. And I might not be in myself. Um, hi, I'm just back from uh, Scotland and Vivian's in Oklahoma City. Cat seven buttonholes. Right, uh, so new fabric. Now, while we're thinking about this um, warmer weather, and making cooler clothing. <laughs> um, you need to have a look on the website under new arrivals because I'm not sure exactly what the fabric content is. This feels like a cotton lawn. I think this is Lady McElroy. I love this one. I can't, let me see if I can get on there. I can't usually get on the internet on my phone to show you no i don't want to, i don't want to do that we'll have a go to show you what the new arrivals are and what they're called because that would help really wouldn't it i don't know though but if you go to debbyshawsang.com and have a look under new arrivals now i'm not getting on that um you'll find this one on there which is beautifully lightweight so if you're thinking about dressmaking for this warmer weather we have some perfect items oh got it perfect items for you so hold the line a minute let's go to there go on to new arrivals because these have only gone on the, in the last couple of days oh they're beautiful oh we've got more new stuff coming on today so uh, lady McElroy italian holidays this is a cotton lawn so a cotton lawn is a finer leaf um a finer weave of fabric than quilting cotton or craft cotton. It's got a beautiful drape to it and it's got a smoothness, but it's 100% cotton. And it is, <laughs> Laura's put a blindfold on. Uh, have you sewn it? Um, it's really lightweight and, and comfortable to wear, particularly in the weather. And don't you wish you were there? 
maybe underneath there, keep them shady. So really, really pretty. Hello, Stephanie. Um, I am keeping cool in here, Rita, at the moment because I've got the aircon on. I've got the aircon on, we've got the door open, so it kind of defeats the object. But um, Bob gets a bit worried if I shut myself in here. So. so do let me know if it gets too noisy and I'll switch it off for a bit. Um, hi, Elaine. Hi, Anne. Italian holidays. I've been to Italy a couple of times and I loved it. Have you? Do you live there? We've, in fact, we've been to Florence and Pisa and um, Rome. And then we went to, I can't remember, the southern coast last year. Uh, route up to, made a duvet cover and pillowcase for Ruby. Oh, you've sewn the whole room. Um, hi, Mary. Just came from YouTube, still showing the card. Oh. I'm blaming the heat. Um, I'd love to be in the shade in Italy with a cocktail. A gin, with a gin, oh, Louis, a gin cocktail. Mm, a gin cocktail would be very nice. Let me show, now this, you can see how fluid this fabric is. If you're going to be dressed in weather like this, then this is the, I hope you're dressed. This is the kind of fabric that you want to be dressed in. So again, let me just find it. It's another Lady McElroy. Lady McElroy is beautiful quality fabric. And this is called Monet Sketch Peach Skin. So it's very slightly brushed. Um, oh, Debbie Welsh's birthday today. Happy birthday to you, Debbie Welsh. <laughs> Helen says she'd move to Italy tomorrow. And well, Julie's in Southern California. Hello, Julie. Hello, Dominica. But yeah, this is, it, it's, is it a lawn? Oh, it, it's, it's just beautifully soft. The peach skin, it's very slightly brushed, but it's like a lawn that is brushed. It's really, really lovely. I'm imagining a maxi dress, and that would be really nice, wouldn't it? I would love that. So, again, that is, um, that is right at my street. If I saw a dress made in that, in a store, I would head over to it and buy it. Of course, you can make your own. These are 150 wide, so perfect for dressmaking. Now I'm thinking caftans, something long and floaty to wear on the beach, maybe a sarong, hello Jenny in Australia, um, but bright and fun and rainbows and a little bit out of focus, but we all feel like that sometimes, don't we, um, particularly in this weather. So that is Aurora, Aurora Borealis digital viscose. So viscose against natural fibre, it's lightweight, it's breathable, it's made from the bark of trees, so it has the same benefits as cotton but it tends to be finer when you wear it. So you're getting lots of happy birthdays, Debbie Walsh. Um, a shared maxi dress. Oh yes, Alana, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? I, I can imagine, I, I would wear that, I just think it's beautiful fabric. That one I would wear when I'm on holiday. These two I would just wear all the time. So, are these a, a lawn or a viscose? Viscose. So, we've got two prints in this one, uh, two colourways of this print. And again, it's just light and soft, floaty light. What advert was that? Floaty light. Hmm. Um, after drooling over half yard sewn club ever since it started says Renette I finally joined today oh welcome along Renette's joined the club today welcome to us what are you going to make first what enticed you what what made you think right I'm going to make that next no I can't tell you next month it's far too early far too early for next month so that one is a neon neon printed neon paint neon painted flowers and that's in pink and then we have the same print in a different fabric, uh, in a different colour. So this one is green, pink and green. I like both of those. That would look really nice in this, um, uh, for the skirt we did in the Half Yard Club with the pockets in the side. Really nice and floaty. Uh, Yasmin's making a one-year-old daughter a dress today. Oh, was it nimble? Thank you, Lord. Love the green one. Hello, Anne-Marie. Nimble. She flies like a bird in the sky. That was that one, wasn't it? Flies like a bird and I wish that she was. Because to eat nimble bread, you have to be th so thin that you could float. 
I did a, um, an, an, a, an advert in a magazine for, oh, I'll show you sometime, um, Sweetex. Um, sweeteners. Was it Sweetex? I'm sure it was Sweetex. So not PC these days. Um, I was only, how old was I? I'd have been about 20. Skinny as anything. And um, they had me sitting on a seesaw and I was on the top end and the girl on the bottom end was half my size now, but she had a tummy, she had a couple of rolls. I mean, you'd envy her figure. Um, but she's looking at me going, hmm, because she was the fat one. And I'm sat at the top being the skinny one, kind of, hmm. Um, it was, I mean, you wouldn't do it nowadays, would you? You just wouldn't do that. It's awful. And I'd rather look like the one on the bottom end than the skinny thing that I was these days. Um, the Flourish and Grow Fabrics bag. I don't know, Alana. That's my daughter's job. I'll have a word. Um, in a green... Yes. <laughs> I look like the green goddess. <laughs> uh, yes, that was me. My first quilt square. Well done, Hayley. Carol's unpicking for a change. <laughs> Do a lot of unpicking. Happens, doesn't it? The Wallace and Gronk filled Oh, I didn't know that, Lois. I've not seen that one. Mm. It was shiny green, Lisa. It was metallic, very sweaty. Um, right, I've got, I've still got more fabrics. These are Riley Blake, and these are loads of fun. Kimberly had a, a moment of excitement when these arrived. Mind you, she was very much a Barbie girl, still is. Look at these. Now then, this one is, let me just have a look. Riley Blake Malibu, Malibu Barbie. Ain't she pretty? Um, P, what's, who's PJ? I'm not very au fait with Barbies. I never had a Barbie, I was a deprived child. Never had a Barbie, never had a Cindy, never had an action girl. Do you know the one thing I wanted when, uh, when I was little and never actually got was a mouse trap game. Do you remember those? Oh, I, I, my friend Susan had a mouse trap game and I loved it. And I, I think I used to dream of having these things without actually asking for them. So my mother never knew that I wanted one. Always wanted a mouse trap game. So when um, my sister used to go horse riding on a horse named Robin, I remember it well because I was as jealous as hell of her. And I said to her, you know, many, many years later, why did I ever go horse riding? She went horse riding, I never went horse riding. And my mum said, we well, never said you wanted to. I said, but you're supposed to read my mind. I'd love to have gone horse riding. Anyway. Uh, oh, a mouse trap. Oh, Jane had a mouse trap. Yeah, I've got mouse trap envy, Jane. Um, Cindy. No, I wasn't allowed Cindy, Lisa. I must have told you this before. I, Barbies and Cindy's were too expensive. I did have two very stiff jointed dolls, one with dark hair and one with, with blonde hair. And I really wanted um, an action girl. They brought out action girl and her eyes moved and I got joints and everything. And my mum thought they were too expensive. So then she looked at action man and action man was too expensive. So I had a Tommy gun. Stiff joints, didn't move his arms. Oh, I made him a couture wardrobe. I love that doll. Got him out of his camouflage and into knitwear and everything. I made him everything, that doll. Um, anyway, so that one is the Malibu Barbie. 19, 1971. I just thought that was earlier than that one. That well, no, must be true. So we've got, uh, we've got Ken, Chrissy, and PJ. And have they all got names? That's it. So that, that's Malibu. Malibu Barbie. Um, Sarah says I wanted a mouse trap until my cousin and I set hers up and it's too much trouble. <laughs> oh, Pippa. Is there a Pippa on there? I don't, oh, I don't know. And I don't know. I never had one. Um, then this one is... Um, oh, no, it's not that one. This one is... is they're all Riley Berg. This is Malibu Barbie Hearts Pink. And then... The blue one is Malibu Barbie Icons Blue. So if you have a, a little Barbie fan in your home, these are actually nice summer clothing, wouldn't they? And uh, Riley Blake, um, really lovely quality fabric. So if you are dressmaking, this, this would be lovely. Jane had a Cindy, my sister had a Pippa, when they both wanted a train set. I had a train set. My dad wanted boys. I had the cowboy outfit and the train set and the garage and the cars. 
And oh, I'd, I'd have liked a Lady Penelope doll. Who's who's that? Lynn. Um, had Barbie rings the bells. Think I'd have one of those. A Pippin doll. I don't know a Pippin doll. I had Polly Polly Pockets, which are tiny little dolls. Well, they fit in your pocket. In Polly Pockets. Uh, Pippa was only six inches tall, so a bit cheaper at the time for mum and dad. Um, yeah, and had a Cindy, but preferred playing with cars. <laughs> um, a Tess, Tressie, Tressie with the growing hair. And oh, my mother wouldn't have bought one of those. She had a, a, like a key in her back, didn't she? And you had the hair grew, and then you could wind it back up again, so it went inside her head. And got old gonks, gonks and trolls, we had those, Marion as well. <gasps> Never had a tiny tears. Um, so do had a next door neighbour, had Barbie everything and, and shared, that's very nice. Um, Gina always wanted a black doll. I had a black doll. Um, a really, I can remember she got a really like porcelain face, very like jet black. And she had, what do they call them? A, a growler where you, where you turn them and she cries. So she's got little holes in her back. Forgotten all about that one. I can't even remember what I called her. Um, oh, I had Lego as well, Liz. Tracy had the, the Barbie motorhome. I would have dreamt of a Barbie, Barbie motorhome, Tracy. Baby Rosemary. I think my sister had a Rosemary. No, Rosebud. Whichever Rosebud was her favourite doll. I don't know, Chatty Cathy. Tiny tears, Tressie and, and te teeny tiny, tiny tears and teeny tiny tears. Remember those? <gasps> I'd ponies and horses until I was 19. I would have another if I had the time. Oh, Jane. Yeah, that's uh, that. The, we used to, the, when we lived in Derby, um, our house was in a, f it, was in, it was within 50 acres of farmland um, and there were stables there. And you get these kids going in there at six o'clock in the morning to muck out the horses before they went to school. A lot of work. A cabbage patched off. Funny looking things, those, weren't they? We we had one of the houses that we moved into. Um, we had um, a cat visitors quite often, and I called it cabbage because its face looked like a cabbage patched off. So it's big round cat face with two eyes that were like that. Um, a funny looking thing, and I can remember being out in the garden calling it because we used to feed it and everything. I thought it was ours, um, and stood there going cabbage, cabbage. And my next door neighbour popped his head around the door and said, "Why are you calling our cat cabbage? His name's Stan." Looked like a cabbage patch doll to me. Um, the best present I had was a silver cross pram. Oh, bought me a full size one when I had my daughter. Oh, how wonderful Irene was that. You don't see those very often. Um, oh, sorry, missing new, missing new comments. You're coming through thick and fast. Kimberly made a quilted jacket. Where can I find how to make it? That'll be on her. No, at the moment, I think that's going on to the Craft Cotton blog. Alaska. I think at the moment it's just on Craft Cotton blog. I don't know if I've actually used it yet. I know she's put some pictures on there. If you have a look on Kim's Instagram page, she's probably put where she got the pattern from. Um, the pattern wasn't uh, patchwork, it was one that she downloaded, she did all the patchwork on that herself. Um, I'm very good, thank you Amanda Dean. Tippy Tubbles, I don't know what a Tippy Tubbles is, Angela. We've got some canvases. Summery coloured canvases, look it's got dragonflies on it, let me find out the name of this one for you. Um, so this is uh, Watercolour Flowers Lilac, so pretty. Again, it's got this beautiful dragonfly. I'm loving watercolour at the moment. I've been doing quite a bit. Um, behind here we have the same print, but in ivory. Oh, we've got butterflies as well. I never noticed the butterflies. Because they, they look like leaves, don't they, the butterflies? So that's the same print, but in ivory. And then the last one to show you is painted garden green. I think, because the, they're canvas, they're, they're a thicker fabric, so you wouldn't wear this unless it was a, a jacket. Um, actually, you could make a skirt, that would be nice. Um, but I'm thinking of you, oh, that's lovely. That actually looks like it's just been painted onto the fabric, doesn't it? Um, you could make some really pretty bags, cushion covers for the garden house, or the summer house, or the conservatory, don't have any of them. Um, but I think that would be, I don't know if that curtains would be really lovely out of that, wouldn't it? 
really nice and springtime and fresh and pretty. Um, yes, Tracy, for bag making, these are perfect. <laughs> Laura's looking away with her fingers in her ears and her eyes closed, going, la, 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 la. I'll get you. It is a bit like Monet, I agree with you. Tippy Tumbles was a doll with a wire attached to it and a little control panel on the other end of the wire. She did forward and backward rolls and she wore red stripy t-shirt and blue tights. Yes, um, Tracy, they're on the website right now on debbyshawsewing.com. Look under new arrivals, you'll find them all there. And don't forget, if you are a Create and Craft Club member, to use your code to get your 10% discount off anything. Um, Oh, Julie, that would make a lovely wall hanging. Just stick it in a frame. Because it just, I mean, when you look at it, it does, you can see the brush strokes on it. It's like, it's like it's just been painted onto the fabric. It's beautiful. Um, Irene's second best present was a, a vulcanised children's sewing machine. Oh! I've got one knocking about somewhere. Was it? Oh, no, it wasn't. That's not that one. I have one, it's probably behind one of those cushions, the Vulcan sewing machine. Got a bit of a, an old sewing machine addiction. Um, what is laundered cotton on dressmaking instructions, Poplin? Laundered cotton? I would imagine that's cotton that's been pre-washed, Marion. I don't, I don't really know. Anybody know what laundered, pat, uh, laundered cotton means on, um, on dressmaking patterns? I would imagine that's something to do with pre-washing, but I, I don't know. Not heard of that. Um, hi, Jill. Jacko. Was Jacko a monkey? Anyway, shall we do a bit of sewing? We're going to do some English paper piecing, just basic. Um, I haven't got an example to show you. I've, I'm going to do hexagons to start with. Um, I did actually make a quilt hand sewing oh no oh there we go so the aircon's blowing everything everywhere um sewing one inch were they one inch might have been two inch um one inch no they were one inch hand sewing um one inch hexagons for my um sewing room secrets quilting book and I don't know, it took me months and it ended up being kind of crib size, so it was about this big. And I intended to make a single bed cover with it. And it just drove me mad after all of that time. Because when you first start, when you think about it, you've got these shapes. So these are the paper shapes. And when you first start sewing them together, it grows really quick. So it goes from like that to that, whoa, three times the size. And then you add some more and it gets bigger. And the bigger it gets, the, it doesn't seem to have very much of an effect. It doesn't seem to grow very much. So when you've got a quilt that's about this big and you sew on another hexagon, it's, I can't really tell the difference. So I did get to crib size, then I got really bored. Then I added a very wide border all the way around it to make it a lot bigger than it was. So you need an awful lot of patience if you're going to make it big. Um, on the Half Yard Club there is a project, um, I think it's still there, for a, a rectangular cushion cover with just two or three rows of um, EPP down one side. So don't feel as though you have to make a quilt, you could just use this as a decoration on, um, on a cushion cover or a bag or anything like that that you, you, um, you, 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 you please to. You choose to. Hello, Jittering Germany. She says, warm greetings. Thank you very much. So, um, if you're not aware, English paper piecing is a way of using paper, um, cut into exact shapes, and then hand sewing them together to create a patchwork effect. Um, it was called English paper piecing, even though it was developed in the States, because at the time, they deemed anything that was English to be rather upmarket. So, in a way, calling it English paper piecing was um, a marketing tool to, to sell the idea of it. And the, what you're going to do, you can either buy or cut out the shapes. These I cut out um, and downloaded off the internet. And we're going to wrap fabric around them and then sew them together. Have a play with the shape. If you've bought a packet of shapes, I'm just saying that doesn't really... There we go. Um, if you bought a packet of shapes, they will be exactly the same size. Have a play with the different designs, because I've only got these here, but you can create flower shapes, 
Um, you can create blocks with them. So have a play with different colours and different um, styles of fabric. I've downloaded these off of the internet and cut them really accurately and they don't seem to be incredibly accurate to be honest. That doesn't actually fit. There we go, we'll use those three. If you're using hexagon shapes with a sewing machine, you, or you wouldn't use the paper, this is the Y seam that can be very difficult to achieve. You'll find it a lot easier when you're sewing this by hand. I'll show you that in just a second. Um, the paper pieces don't stay in your work. They're going to be torn out afterwards. And there are different ways of actually tacking these in, in place. There's a great way of using up smaller pieces of fabric. So what I'm going to do is to just cut my fabric around about a quarter of an inch larger. It doesn't have to be exact um, because we're going to use the paper shape to create the patchwork. So don't worry if what you're cutting around here isn't a perfect quarter of an inch. And as you can see, mine is nowhere near a perfect quarter of an inch. So we're just going to sew the three together for now. Let's have a little bit of that one. And I'm using a fabric glue pen. I have a little story about that as well. Just cut around here. Don't go any less than quarter of an inch. You're going to find that quite difficult to do. If you have a fabric glue pen, you're going to find this so much easier to do. So all I've used it for, see that's not, that's not, regular it really doesn't matter um, there are different ways of then actually tacking the fabric around the papers so let's cut these out first of all and then we'll have a look at that and I'll show you three different ways of doing it and I'm going to use a bright pink thread in my needle, which you would never normally use, but I want you to see where the stitches are. So those are the three pieces. I seem to have lost my knit. Oh, there we go. Underneath all of this. There we go, like that. So I'm going to put the iron on as well. Just bear with me a second one. I'll just plug that in. I think that would, would be helpful. Go there. And you can go there. Do a sizable printed lunchbot lined with vinyl. That's that's quite a a challenge in an hour. I can put some thought into that one though. Um, you can print out hexes if you have a Cricut machine. That's a good idea. Or you can buy punches if you wanted to do it that way. That's easy to do. Um, Olive's got a load of these ready to get going. Skip a doll. I don't know what a skip a doll is, Connie. Is that anything? Is that Bobby's cousin or something? I don't know. Right. So what I'm going to do to start with is to fold the fabric around the edge of the paper. Now this is. Um, it's not important that you iron it, but getting that nice crisp edge is important because that's what's going to be a seam basically. So let's fold all of these in. And so, and so, and whoops, over you go. You can finger crease it, particularly if you're using a, um, a, a good cotton, it will then, um, it'll hold its place quite nicely. Okay, so number one is hand tacking. So all I need to do here is to make sure I catch every one of those folds and I'm going straight through the paper and just tacking that together. So again, just catching the folds there. Make sure I've got a nice sharp edge. And we'll go all the way around. So this is quite time consuming. And when you've finished, to, before you remove the papers, you're going to need to undo all of these tacking or basting stitches. So just carry on around there. So again, quite time consuming and not a method I would choose myself. But if you've got time on your hands and you know it's going to take you a, a while to make your patchwork pieces, then you go ahead and just tack away like this. 
stacking in the UK, basting in the States and other parts of the world, I would imagine. I'm not so sure what you call it, but we're, we're tacking. So I've gone straight through the paper. So again, after I've sewn the pieces together, you will need to remove the paper. So therefore, you will need to remove all of those tacking stitches. So that's one way of doing it. The second way, so let me just knot my thread again here. And again, just for ease, I'm going to just iron. You don't have to do this. You could finger press. I'm just going to iron the edges around. If your fabric tends to bounce back a little bit. Oh, no, 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 don't want the iron. <laughs> little spider there. I don't want to burn him. Um, fold that over. Just to get that nice crease. So again, you can, you can finger crease that if you wanted to. So just go all the way around. All the way around, that's a bit tight. Okay, so this time we're still hand sewing, but I'm not going all the way through the paper. I'm just going to hand sew those corners as I folded them over. So we'll do a knot in here. Skip over to the next corner. So I'm, I'm not going through the paper, literally just sewing the edges of the, the corners together. In which case you don't have to take out the stitches when you're finished. You can if you want to, but you're not going to see them from the front. They're not going through the paper, so you don't have to take them out. Yeah, this is... I, I do like English paper piecing. It's a little bit like smocking to me. It's just something I can sit and do. Um, it's mindless. You don't have to concentrate too hard. And I, I can't sit still for very long in front of the TV. I have to be doing something. I have to keep my hands busy. So at least you're being productive while you're watching TV. Okay, so whoops, just fold that over. So again, that, that is still quite time consuming, but at least you don't have to take out the stitches. So that's way number two. Number three is my preference, which is this, which is a glue pen. So I use one dollop in the center to hold it in place. And then I like to glue onto the fabric, not the paper, because it um, delivers a little bit more glue than just gluing onto the paper. and then fold these over. And I do like to put a little dot just on the fold there as well, just so that all of that is secured. Now this is a fabric glue pen. I think we're actually out of stock on the website, um, designed for fabric. However, so don't use a print stick. Don't use something that's designed for paper. This is designed for fabric. You can see the blue in the center. That's going to dry clear and That'll hold itself in place while I'm sewing. Um, it may, when you try to set the card out, it may be very sticky. It may have really stuck to the paper, in which case take your iron and glide it over and it'll melt the glue and then you can peel it away afterwards really, really easily. Um, would you use plain paper or fusible applique paper? I've not used fusible applique paper. If, I, I don't know if you can peel that off or not. You need to be able to take the paper out. So you could use... Um, freezer paper, might be a bit flimsy. I like to use something of a weight of around about 160 GSM. Not, to, not like card, so it's too thick and not too flimsy that it's not going to hold the shape. So about 160, this is copy paper. So, you know, that, that's absolutely fine. That's a perfect weight to use. Some of the ones you buy actually have holes in the middle, so you can prise them out quite easily as well. You could punch one of those if you have a hole punch. Okay, just gonna put some more thread in here. And again, I'm using bright pink. Um, normally, I would use, if I, if I can't get the same color as the pieces, and generally, the, the fabric, it's too long, the fabric pieces are different colors. Um, so you use a beige, or a light gray, or a cream, or an off-white, or a neutral color. Don't use white, it could stand out a little bit too much. Then we're going to start sewing these together. 
Right. So don't have your... Um, Sarah, I'll go back through your messages later on. I'm, I'm missing these. How do you do the apple core or shell shapes? Alana, I'm doing that next, next Wednesday. We're going to do apple core and clamshell next Wednesday. Um, right. So let's pop these together. So don't have your thread too long. It's tempting because then you don't have to re-thread quite so often. Um, but when you think about it, my, my hexagons don't seem very even for some reason. I was so careful when I cut them. Right, that'll do. You're going to drag the thread across the edge of the paper. It's going to weaken your thread. So if you have your thread too long, by the time you get to the end, it could easily break. So have your thread around about 12 inches long. Then we're going to catch the edge. We've got lined up the two edges of the two shapes. And we're just going to catch a few threads at the edge. If you can avoid going through the card, that would be ideal. If you do catch the edge of the card, don't worry. And you can still reuse the card afterwards, even though it looks perforated a little bit. So I've got my knot with a little bit of a tail. I like to wrap that inside the stitches. So I'm going to go back and forth, let me come a bit closer, from one side to the other, keeping the stitches quite close together. So again, I'm just wrapping in the end of that knot as I go. So the smaller the stitches you can make, the stronger this is going to be. And the less fabric you catch, the more invisible this is going to be on the right side. So just keep going over and over. This is a whip stitch. Close together and catch, catch two or three threads, if you're going to count them, of the actual fabric. If you just catch one thread, you could find that um, your fabric ladders. And if you catch too many threads, you're going to see your stitches on the right side. And just keep them quite close. It's recommended around about 12 stitches an inch. I think I can do a few more than that. And you can get quite quick at this as well. So let's go all the way to the opposite end. Tiny, tiny stitches. It's a little bit like um, eating a donut without licking your lips. It's very tempting to turn this over and see the other side, but I'm not going to until I've finished. So you can see really tiny stitches. I love doing this. I just find it so relaxing and actually so rewarding as well. So let's just keep going up to the end. A thimble may help if you're going to do a lot of this. And again, if you do catch the card, don't concern yourself too much. So I'm coming up to the seam here where I'm going to make the join, but I'm not going to take the needle out. I'm going to knot it. So right on the point, I'm going to take the needle in, but not pull it out. And then just wrap the thread around there three or four times and pull it through. And that's now knotted. Now when I turn this over, I should try to get rid of that's a tacking stitch. You should barely see any stitches on this side. So even though I've used a bright, shocking pink, which should stand out a mile, because I've made those tiny, tiny stitches, you don't even see those. That's what I found so rewarding. Um, Helen, you can do this um, with the same machine. Um, people are worried about the Y seams. You can't go wrong with the Y seam on your hand sewing. It's just a different way of quilting, so yeah, you can sew. Oh, you mean through the paper with the sewing machine? You can, but um, you'll see the stitches. No matter how tiny you make that zigzag, you're going to see some of the stitches. But yes, you can do that. Um, but this is more of a, a traditional way of doing it, so yeah, no problem. A little bit like, actually, I did the, um, the crumb quilted sewing machine mat. Do you remember that one? No, here we go. Come here. This one. All of those hexagons were individually sewn together on the sewing machine. But you can see... You can see the zigzag stitch. So, similar to that, I would imagine, is what you mean. Um, right. So now we're going to sew this one into here. So let's turn those over right sides together. And start to sew. And again, I'm just going to sew over 
the actual join a couple of times to secure that. And then we'll go all the way down this side in just the same way. So just through the very edge of the fabric, tiny stitches, quite close together. Cass says she loves sewing hexes together, so do I. Oh, Linda Lou's just woken up from a siesta. I think we could all do with a siesta. I can't do that. I can't, I can't take a break in the middle of the day because then I just feel awful when I carry on. It's like waking up in the middle of the night. <gasps> Hi, Linda Lou. Oh, sorry, I answered your question before I said hello to you. Uh, do I use a patchwork quilt? Well, I, d I don't know what you mean by do I use a patchwork quilt? On my bed? No. Um, right, so let's just carry on along here. Ooh. Now my needle's come undone because I, I blame you for that. Read any comments. Angela's got her calf yard winter. I'm glad they're going out from Amazon. About time. Can't see a thing. Coffee, my dear. Coffee would be lovely, thank you. You did say you were on your own here, weren't you? <laughs> Nobody else wants coffee. No. Um, it's hot. Thank you. Thank you. Unless it's got gin in it, they're not interested, this lot. Okay. Um, thank you, Helene. Right, show what I'm doing there. So then this is the one that was tacked, so that was, that's what that loose stitch was. So again, just carry on all the way across. So what's the biggest thing, what's the biggest patchwork piece you've ever quilted by hand or sewn together by hand? You don't have to quilt them, obviously. Mine was the crib size. I don't have a ditty, Susie. I have written a ditty, actually, for... Um, uh, Seamless Sunday, but um, there's no point in reading it at the moment because it's not Seamless Sunday till now. It's coming around really quickly, that is, isn't it? It was off a cup, you're not kidding. Um, yes, yeah, so on the uh, 31st, which is only a week on Sunday, I know, we've got um, Seamless Sunday, a six hour sewing show on Create and Craft. I should be plugging this like mad because I'm so excited about it. Um, a Seamless Sunday was a concept I came up with for the old Create and Craft um, a few years ago. And I was quite excited when I had a call from the buyers at the new Create and Craft saying, would you like to come and present Seamless Sunday again? Yes, of course I would. I love that show. So if it works, so I want, I want lots of support. Um, they're going to be doing it every eight weeks. In fact, they've already got the next one booked in, so it's going to work, isn't it? Anyway, more news of that nearer the time. Hello, Marion. So that's two pieces sewn together. So I've sewn down there and down there. And then I need to sew these pieces so I can fold that one in half. And join the edges. So again, that's got to be the easiest way of doing that Y seam and getting it perfectly accurate and flat. So let's do this. I've already got the knot at that end. And again, personally, it's not a necessity. The, the tail of the knot, I just like to sew over that just to make it nice and neat and keep it within the seam. So just keeping the edges together. Alexa. A double size quilt, says Joan. Wow, that must take ages. Uh, Jean, it starts at 7 o'clock in the morning and goes through to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, there's going to be, I'm going to be presenting all of the shows. They're not an hour long, they're all over the place. So some are 20 minutes, some are half an hour. We're we'll going backwards and forwards from one to another. And I'm going to have Mr. Markin Parker as my roving reporter chatting to guests in the green room as well. So I will post actually nearer the time. Oh, excuse me. Um, but I, kind of, I, I know that people email into the studio and ask questions, but I thought it might be fun if I give you a list of who's going to be on the show, if you've got any questions that you want to ask them. So it could be something funny, could be something about their background, um, could be a bit of gossip. Maybe you'd want to know 
Stephanie Waitman is going to be on the show. Stephanie is a very talented painter, um, card maker, obviously, and I don't know if you're aware, she is an expert sewer. She's she's made she made Nancy Watts's wedding dress. She makes her own curtain. She does a lot of sewing, but I don't think she's so well known for that. So maybe you'd want to ask her who taught her how to sew. What was the uh, the biggest disaster she's ever had? The largest thing that she's ever sewn? The thing that intimidated her most? And I, I think those kind of questions will be quite fun. So I'll, um, I'll I'll pop a post nearer the time as to who's going to be on. You know, Alistair from House of Alistair is a trained tailor. He's an incredibly talented man, and he comes on the show with all of these amazing dressmaking fabrics. But I don't know if you actually hear too much about his training and his background. So. Yeah, we'll get some questions there. Um, right. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Thinking about joining the Harley Field Club to try my first one. The 12 Days of Christmas panels fabric. Sarah wants to know what to make with 12 Days of Christmas fabric. Stockings! And you, I better show you what I'm doing. I'm just carrying on now. So those are the three pieces sewn together. Again, have a look at... Um, and, and look... look, look you can't see the stitches. You can see the tacking stitches. They need to come out. Um, keep your papers in as far as you can until you're finished. So I'd keep a paper in until I've joined another piece to all of the sides. And then all you're going to do is to peel this back and pull out the paper. Like so. That's why I'd keep it joined until I've finished all of the sides. So, And, and when you get to the edge, obviously, then you're going to have to pull that out. Um, but those stitches again need to be very small and very strong to actually hold the fabric as you're pulling the papers out so that you're not going to tear any of the seams. Difficult to actually um, re-sew seams that come undone. Um, Kath, it is the 31st, it's a week on Sunday, it's the 31st of July on Create and Craft. You'll be able to watch that on YouTube, on Facebook. I think they're live on the most, but you'll be able to watch it on the website on createandcraft.com. Um, I'll give you an email to e email address to e email the studio as well because that would be nice. Um, Irene, no, I didn't do it because I ran out. I, I, I sold out of all the stock, so it seemed pointless in, in making something when I got nothing. When you couldn't buy what I was making, so I can get around to that. Um, yes, yeah, so and, and it'll be all day long from seven in the morning through to one o'clock. Um, We'll all get together as many as many of the guests that I can pull in at seven o'clock in the morning. Because if you're not until 12, 12 o'clock, like um, Steph's not until twelve o'clock or on at twelve o'clock, but I'm going to try and get her to come in at seven. So it's a big ask. Um, we'll have a chat with all of them about what's coming up. There's a Juki one day special, so we've got Gary in as well. Uh, Karen from Seams is coming in. She's just got a short bit in one of the shows um, with uh, her hand care and. and uh, um, sanitization gel, so we call them, and all that kind of thing. We have um, House of Alistair has two shows, so you're going to get some amazing dressmaking fabric, and then we've got Visage with Sarah Payne guesting, and that's going to be Peter Rabbit Christmas fabrics. So I'm, I'm not ignoring her. Can you please just whisper what's on next month's club projects? Lisa, you will be over the moon with next month's projects. I'm making outfits for um, Maddie and Robin. And they're onesies, and Maddie has uh, a onesie with a hood and rabbit ears, and Robin has a onesie with a hood with teddy bear ears. They are so cute. So cute, but I didn't say that because it's far too soon to talk about next month's project. Do you want to see it? I haven't made Robins yet, but I have, have made Maddie. I'm going to be in trouble if I show you. Well, I can't show you here because um, she's down in the sewing studio, but it, if Gary happens to be watching and would like to bring Maddie down, because she's all dressed up in a bunny outfit. She's so cute. So, yes. Hmm. No, 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 not the book, not the book. This is just the, the main project, so I need to do a video for it as well. There will, there will be a video. They do look very cute. Uh, Cass says it starts at 7 o'clock. I'm going to watch England play cricket at lunchtime that day. <laughs> yeah, 31st it is. I shall give you, I'll give you more news of that nearer the time. Um wanted to show you, so that's hexagons, okay? I wanted to show you uh, 60 degree diamonds. 
I'm not going to sew them all together like I did that one because it's going to take an age. But these are a really nice shape to play with. I've only cut a few out. Um, but you can see already I can make a star shape. But I love a tumbling block, which is basically that. Because I love the way that it looks when it's put together. It's like an optical illusion. This cushion cover is from my book. <laughs> Hello. Um, from mine and Kimberly's book, The Refashion, Re Restitch, Restyle. This is made from three, uh, one, two, yeah, three shirts that I bought from a charity shop. But I just, uh, I can send your eyes funny. Look. I, I love the illusion. If you're going to make a, but if you look at that, that's the star look. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's your star shape. Um, if you're going to make a tumbling block, it's ideal to have a dark, a medium, and a light fabric. So very, very contrasting, so that you can create the shadows there as well. Um, the best to make Maddy, Maddy herself, um, cotton. I know some of you have used calico to make her. I prefer a cotton. I think calico's got a bit of a slub to it, and I, I'm, I'm not so fond of that. Um, we have on the website some Tilda doll fabrics in flesh tones. We have a tan, which I think... Oh, he was watching. Oh, thank you. Is it a job somebody's watching? I know. I didn't think you were. Look. Oh, she's so cute. So that's going to be next month's project. Um, this is the tan I made this one out of. But so, yeah, any, any kind of skin tone you like. She is so cuddly in this. I do, do you know, I, I, I talk to her like she's a person. I've, she's been sitting in my sewing room since I came up with the design. It took me ages to do this one. Um, and uh, I actually said to her today, you're a bit hot in that. Just, just didn't answer me. Didn't answer me at all. So, yeah, that's going to be out on the first of the month. And again, Robin will be exactly the same but with teddy ears instead of bunny ears. If you wanted to do cat ears, then you could do. If you wanted to leave the ears off, then that's fine as well. But she's, she's just so, I want one of these. She's just so soft and snuggly. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's better. Thank you, Jean. The tumbling block, the papers. No, it, uh, we haven't got, um, any, I think we've got some small clam shallons. Apple core, I think that's all we've got on the website at the moment. Um, Tina, they, they will, I haven't made Robins yet, so Robins are going to be Teddy, because I, I haven't got any Teddy coloured fleece. Mind you, blue isn't exactly rabbit coloured, is it? Um, but they, they're just, they're just going to look so, so cute together. Um, I don't see why not, Maria. If you take your time, you're getting like full on instructions on how to make her. There's been so many Maddies made. I've seen so many pictures of Maddie. And yes, there will be a Maddie book coming out in January. She'll be slightly different. She'll be the same, same height, um, same face, but she'll have eyebrows. So she's the new and improved. Um, but her legs and arms will have more shape to them. So this one's really quite tubular. Um, the new one will have shape shape to the legs so that's but the clothes will still fit so any of the Maddie outfits that have been ha on Half Yard Club will fit the Maddie on the doll uh, um, in the book and the Maddie book ones will fit the Maddie from the Half Yard Club and none of the outfits are the same so li oh Lynette I, I haven't even I haven't even written it yet um, smocking won't be out for another year or so I, I don't I need to finish it by next month and then it's probably take another year after that to actually get it published um, no, Anne, uh, it's 45 minutes, which is one of the reasons why I said yes. Um, so I love working on Sewing Street. I really enjoyed working on Sewing Street. I love everybody there. But it was a two and a half hour journey to get to work in the morning and they start work at six. A very early start and a very long day and then a very long journey back again. So um, create and craft just down the road. So that's, that's a lot easier for me. Um, the faces, Helene, the, the, you've, you've got um, a, a, like a drawing of the face. The easiest way to do it would be to, um, if you've got a light box or you can hold your fabric up to light and place it over, um, place it over the light and, and then just trace it. Or if you use a, a, what do they call it, a carbon paper 
So you place your pattern on the top and then just draw over it. It's quite, it's quite easy to do, really. So anyway, we're doing, we're doing diamonds now. <laughs> um, I just wanted to show you with this one. So I'm not going to go into so much detail. Um, how I would pop them together. So again, like before, around about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more, doesn't really matter because it's the edge of the template that's going to define the shape. So let's pop that one on there. Like so. So that, in fact, I shan't sew these. I've got the elastic as well in a second. Whoops, that's that one. And let's have one out of this. Because they're actually quite nice shades to do this with. Because they're very different. So let's do that. Whoops. Do that. And that, 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 that was a very wide seam allowance, but that's fine. So, glue stick again. You can hand tack these again if you want to, but I'm not going to. So that goes in the middle of there. That one goes in the middle of there. And that one in the middle of there. Right. Now when I'm wrapping these over, I'm going to do them all the same way. So I like to do a clockwise. So a bit of glue down there, wrap it over. And there, wrap it over. There, wrap it over. And there. And wrap it over. So on the second piece, again, I'm going clockwise. I'm putting the glue onto the fabric rather than the paper because it delivers more glue. So you lose up a little bit more glue, but I really want to make sure that it sticks. Let's go down this side, wrap it over, and wrap it over. So when I start to line these up, all of these extra bits are facing in the same way. Why is that not facing in the same way? And then this one. Again, clockwise. Don't be tempted to chop those end bits off. They're really important. Because now when I put them together, so I'm not going to sew these, they butt up against each other. If you chop them off, they'll fray. But when you start to join these together, and that's one of the reasons why do it all in the same direction, so all of those end bits are facing the same way, when you start to join them together, they fit like a jigsaw puzzle. It makes a really nice, neat join. When we come to the bottom here, so if I'm making the tumbling block, just like we did with the hexagons, you'll sew those three together in the same way. And what I like to do is to sew each one of these ones, each one of these blocks individually, and then join them all together. I think it can be really confusing if you sew that, and then you sew that one there, and then you sew one on there. It's a lot easier to actually make the blocks up first and then join them together. But do be aware when you sew them together that all of the blocks are the same, because if you do that, it's going to be odd. So when you sew them, just make sure that you've got all three that you know you start with this then so to that then so to that so they all end up being completely uniform um oh Yvonne I'll, I'll see you again next time Where, what what day is it I'll see you again on Saturday don't know what we're making yet but we'll make something on Saturday um hi Julie and how do you know what size paper template to use for EBP where do you get them um, you c these shapes I downloaded off the internet. I, I, I put in 60 degree diamonds and up came the shape and I printed them off. 
um, and the same with the hexagons. You can buy pre-made shapes from so many different places. Have a look on Amazon. My bag's full of them. And remember, you can reuse them, so don't take them out and throw them away. You reuse them, so they can last you a long, long time. Um, for the tumbling blocks, that's a 60-degree diamond. Just make sure you get the, the 60-degree, not a 30-degree, um, because there are different shapes of diamonds. And the measurements are taken from the edge. So, for instance, that is a a one and a half inch hexagon because it measures one and a half inches across here. It's not the depth of it, it's the side here. And your 60 degree diamond, your 60 degree is that one at the point. And the length of that, that's a two inch, is the sides. The sides measure two inches. I think the center measures two inches as well by, by chance. But if you see a two inch 60 degree diamond, each one of these sides measures two inches. If you see a one inch hexagon, it's that side that measures the one inch. So just to let you know. So just really quickly, um, let's move all that out of the way. Um, oh, Colette's just joined us. Hello, packing for holidays. How lovely. Um, no, I don't know what hexiform shapes are that you leave in. That sounds very interesting, Bob. Maybe I should have a look at that. Oh, I was going to tell you, when, when I first started, um, when I first start anything, I like, uh, if it's something that I'm not too sure about, I will train. So um, I know I was brought up as a dressmaker, but to get the techniques correct for me to teach anybody else, I went to the London College of, of Fashion. Um, when I started designing patterns, I went back to the London College of Fashion and did a course in, um, in, in design and setting up business. Um, when I wanted to learn about upholstery, I did a course in upholstery. When I wanted to learn about quilting and patchwork, and I'm going back many, many years, I did a course. And um, we started off with hexagons, we had to make our own templates out of brown paper and um, hand tack them all together. And I can remember saying to the tutor, can you just use glue? I was nearly thrown out. These things weren't around then. She was disgusted. You had to do it all by hand. You had to sit and tack it and turn it all by hand. There were no glues involved. That's what these are made for these days. Um, yeah, and then I did, I was on, I was working on Idea World at the time. I was doing a sewing show. And I showed what I'd made and then explained how I'd made it. It was a, a very small patchwork piece that went inside an aperture to make a Christmas card. It was really simple. Not something that was unique. It's something, you know, you can see thousands of them on Pinterest and YouTube and all kinds of things. So I didn't steal an idea. It was a patchwork technique. Oh, I got the stinkiest email. That I'd, um, I'd, I was making money out of what she'd taught me. I thought, actually, I'm not, I'm just doing my job here, and I just wanted to share this with her. Really nasty. Because um, I thought afterwards, that's a bit like your math teacher saying, you're using what I've taught you to get a job. It's rubbish. You can't do that. And anyway, that was a long time ago. Um, I wonder you off. I'll see you again. Oh, Deirdre, we've got her hooked. Lovely. Yes, I have left the iron on. Let me just unplug that. Thank you. So really quickly, Elastic, I can't remember who asked me, but she was, sorry, I should write down the names really, shouldn't I? She's um, putting Elastic into the hem of um, a fitted sheet. And from what I can see from the fitted sheet that I looked at, I'll just cut a piece of fabric off to show you what I'm thinking. I know it's curved, I'm just going to do this on the straight. Because on mine, the elastic wasn't on the outside. It was actually sewn into the seam. So you, you couldn't see it. It's on the inside. Um, so this is a way, if yours is like that, that I would do it. So I'm going to hem this by folding it over twice. Leaving enough room for the elastic. It's no difference whether that's straight or curved. Oh, look, that's not very good, is it? Oh, I've got my camera in completely the wrong place there. Let me shove up a bit and do that. I bet I've forgotten my safety pin as well. So obviously if you're repairing something, you're going to make this make the hem the same width as whatever it is that you're repairing. 
Let's do that. Let's see if I can find a safety pin. Might have to come back to this one, you know. I'm, I'm not, not quite prepared enough, am I? I'll use a needle backwards. Here we go. So on the sheet, um, there was probably from there to there that was elasticated and the elastic had gone and the rest of the hem wasn't actually um, wasn't actually sewn. Personally, it's a sheet, you're never going to see it, it tucks underneath your mattress. I'd be quite happy to lay some new elastic on there and just stretch it and fit it to the outside of the outside of the sheet. If you want that to be hidden inside the seam, then let's just take this, see if I can thread it onto an embroidery needle. Oh, this is going to work. Thread it onto a bodkin or a safety pin, ideally. That's not going to work. May have to come back to this one, but we are running out of time anyway, aren't we? Not a safety pin in sight when you need one. Let's see if we've got a bodkin. Which sounds about to be a bulkhead or something somewhere, isn't it? So, what I would do with this is to push that on there. On you go. Don't use this one very often. And thread the elastic through. In you go. So it's rather a large bodkin I've got for this. I'll do it from that end. So if I want my elastics to start here and finish here, I'll thread this through until it covers that whole area. So just bear with me. So there's many different ways you can do this. I, I think this one is the fussiest, but I'm just trying to replicate what was actually happening on my bed sheet. So I'm just moving that so the bodkin's out of the way. And the elastic is underneath the fabric here, and I'm going to sew over that. Put that out of the way a bit more. So that's going to hold the elastic in place. Oh, I know you can't see that too well, but my camera's in the wrong place. So I've done that. So the elastic is stuck in there, so I can take the bodkin out now. So my elastic's trapped in here. And then there's the other line that I want to do the stretch to, so I can pull the elastic until I get the tightness that I want. So however that is that matches up with the other three corners. And then I'm going to sew straight across that bit there. Hi, Julie. Yeah, they're not my favourite tool, actually, Julie. They are, they are a little bit bulky. So then I can snip that back as close as I can. And I've ended it with just the gathered piece in the centre. So that would be the bit that tucks underneath the mattress and then that's the bit that goes along the side. I know that's not quite long enough, but um, you get the idea. That, that's how I would do it. So that's what my bed sheet looks like. But if I'm just replacing a sheet of my own or replacing the elastic in a sheet of my own, I'd sew the elastic to the top. That's um, an, an awful lot easier way of doing it. But you're going to see the elastic, but that's going to be tucked underneath your mattress. So do we really care? OK, um, that's it then. Uh, from me, thank you for joining me today. Um, Mum and Nana turning sheets to repair them. I know, you said, said, we should do that though, shouldn't we? We should be doing that in this day and age. Um, bought a fitted sheet from Danelle, but got the wrong size. Had elastic all the way around, and more of a bargain to keep the original. 
buying you onto the correct size. Um, only Christian says I like you can. Oh, you've gone. You can only watch TV when my hands are busy. Cross stitch is my go-to. I'm a bit like that. I can read a magazine while I'm watching TV, but I, I, I can't just sit there and do nothing. I do sit and scroll. Not too, not too clever. Um, I think you, Lisa. Oh, I know. Oh, go on. Um, I know I've list mode, missed loads of your comments, but I'll go back and have a look afterwards. Um, thanks, Mary. I shall see you again on Saturday. Thank you, Lynn. Just do me, me graphical thing. Um, so, yeah, 11 o'clock on Saturday morning, if you want to join me then. We will make a little something. Debbie does crochet on watching TV. Um, I don't know what. It'll be a quick make. I'm going to give you a little bit of snow again to keep you cool. So imagine that you're in this landscape. If you're a little bit baking hot and you can't cope with it, just, to, just imagine you're here. Um, and I'll see you again Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. So thanks for your company. It's been nice, hasn't it? I shall see you again soon. You take care. Bye-bye.